Cybernet's back with me, Steve Truitt. Today we'll meet a prime defender, fly high with Dragon Ball, check out a freaky city, and become a backyard wrestler. It's unstoppable. It's Cybernet. We begin this week's show with the return of the popular Nintendo heroine, Samus Aran. Her previous escapade was a major hit. Will this one be the same? Let's find out as we climb into our red and gold power suit in Metroid Prime 2 Echoes, rolling onto the GameCube. In this first-person sci-fi adventure, the super-skilled bounty hunter must travel to the planet Aether, which is being torn apart by two dimensions, the light and the dark. Your mission is to rescue the Federation troopers from a mysterious and deadly race called the Ing. But when an electrical storm forces you to crash, you're transformed from the hunter into the hunted. A large portion of this game deals with combat, so you'll battle a plethora of evil aliens. The fighting is fierce and frantic. Luckily, you can target lock onto your enemies while strafing. Sadly, there is no dual analog control, which leads to some frustrating encounters. Fortunately, though, when the action gets too intense, you can always morph into a ball and roll away. This is not your average run-and-gun shooter, because you'll also spend a lot of time solving puzzles and scanning for clues with your scan visor. You can even search for equipment upgrades, like the dark visor, which allows you to see your enemies more clearly. Unfortunately, just like the original, there's lots of tedious backtracking involved. If you become bored of the slow-paced exploration elements, you can join your friends in some multiplayer mayhem. That's right, for the first time in this long-running series, up to four players can now compete in a deathmatch tournament. Although this tacked-on addition is nice, it's still subpar compared to superior titles such as Halo 2. From the stylistic heads-up display to the gorgeous level designs, the graphics are fantastic. And while it's not as groundbreaking as the previous edition, this highly anticipated sequel still succeeds. With the inclusion of many enhancements, Metroid Prime 2 is more than merely an echo of its predecessor. So you have all these wonderful mutant powers and you've decided to go out and fight crime. If that's the case, grab a pen and write down this cheat, because every superhero, even a member of the X-Men, can use some help for Legends on the PlayStation 2. At the main menu, press up, up, right, left, down, down, and then press the start button. We've just unlocked all the extreme costumes for you and your team to help tilt the battle in your favor against the bad guys. Because let's face it, it's the costume that really makes the superhero. Our next title is for football fans who take their favorite sport very seriously. If micromanaging every facet of a professional team is your idea of a good time, then Total Club Manager 2005 on the PC, Xbox, and PS2 may be for you. There are a handful of excellent new features this time around. In addition to selecting teams and players from all the officially licensed leagues, you can now create a club from the ground up, beginning with the location. There are over 30,000 European cities to base your team. You'll then design everything imaginable, including the club badge, kit, and stadium. Also new is the interactive manager dugout, which allows you to bark out orders to players and change tactics throughout the game. As for improvements, the transfer system is a lot better than last time, and the menu interface also has been upgraded, making it easier to navigate the screens. 
Football management simulations are all about creating a realistic experience while presenting a seemingly infinite amount of options and statistics. This series excels in this department, allowing you to create your dream team. And once your club is trained and ready to play, you can watch matches unfold in full 3D. This is a real highlight thanks to an improved graphics engine and more responsive AI. Although the championship manager franchise from IDOS is slightly deeper, Total Club Manager ranks a close second. We blast into our Game of the Week with the return of intergalactic explorer Captain Olimar, star of the GameCube hit Pikmin. He just discovered that his planet is broke. Luckily, the objects he's collected on his journey are worth their weight in gold, so he sets out to collect more valuable items and save the day in this super sequel. The structure of Pikmin 2 remains basically the same as its predecessor, combining both real-time strategy and tactical action elements. You control a horde of multicolored plant creatures called Pikmin, directing them to gather treasure, fight enemies, and solve puzzles. To order them about, all you have to do is blow your whistle, then issue a command with a push of a button. The Pikmin are hardworking and obedient, but to complete objectives, their special abilities need to be efficiently utilized. Yellow ones are electrically charged, blue can swim, and red are fire resistant. This sequel also introduces purple Pikmin, which are incredibly strong and can carry heavy objects. There are also new white ones, which are poisonous, making them harmful to hungry beasts. Another major new feature is the addition of a second diminutive space traveler named Louie. That means you'll be able to control two groups of Pikmin so you can multitask and double team the tougher bosses. <laughs> Nearly every aspect of the first Pikmin has been smoothed out. The control mechanics are more user friendly, the AI is improved, and the graphical enhancements give all the animations a lush, colorful sheen. Thankfully, they've also done away with time considerations, so now you don't have to feel pressure when exploring the environments. In addition to the longer single-player mission, there's a new two-player split-screen mode where you must collect marbles. Pikmin 2 might seem a bit quirky, but it's one of the most innovative and challenging titles around, which is why it's our Game of the Week. Okay, it's time for Cybernet's top 10 favorite PlayStation 2 games. At number 10, we travel to the far future for loads of intense running and gunning action in Killzone. The big finale to one of our favorite franchises is here, and while we're sad to see it go, Jack 3 is an awesome final act at 9. In the 8th spot, we flash back to the 60s with our old pal Solid Snake as he battles for survival in Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater. The tough warriors of Dragon Ball Z Budokai 3 don't follow anyone's rules, not even the laws of gravity, at number 7. At number 6, this family of heroes hasn't lost any steam as they battle the forces of evil in their film-based game, The Incredibles. At number 5, Ratchet and Clank are back in their third endeavor, driving, jumping, and blasting their way to victory. Do your Sims have the right stuff to make it big in the city? It's time to get the party started with The Herbs, Sims in the City at 4. At number 3, travel to the mystical land of Middle-earth and live the adventure of the Lord of the Rings, the Third Age. At 2, cruise the nighttime streets and race to become number 1 in Need for Speed Underground 2. But our hearts and our cars have been stolen by the cast of Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, our PS2 number one. Everyone fears aliens, especially those that are mean and nasty. Well, now you have a chance to become one of those wicked extraterrestrials and alien hominid invading the GameCube and PlayStation 2. At least this yellow guy is on the cute side. One day, Alien Hominid is out joyriding in his new spaceship when suddenly, the FBI shoots him out of the sky. Faster than you can say, take me to your leader, the evil men in black take his spaceship to Area 51. 
Your mission is to help the alien find his ride and get off this third rock from the sun. Alien Hominid is one of the most unusual games ever developed. Created in 2002 with the Macro Media Flash program, it was originally a free downloadable game over the internet. With over 7.5 million downloads, independent developer The Behemoth got the hint and created a game that appeals to humans of all ages. The truth is out there. The gameplay is simple with straightforward objectives. This is a classic 2D side-scrolling platform shooter. Just run from the left to the right and shoot at everything that gets in your way. Since the controls are simple, you can mindlessly jump, crouch, and drive vehicles through 15 insane levels. And always remember though, aliens good, humans bad. For such a simple game, it's surprisingly difficult. So it's best to grab a friend and play the co-op mode, which is extremely fun and reminiscent of the excellent Metal Slug 3. At times, the action becomes so chaotic and intense that it's nearly impossible to dodge all the bullets to avoid death. Luckily, you have an unlimited amount of continues. Visual style very unique because it's all hand-drawn. Lead artist Dan Paladin expertly blends cartoon-style violence with some of the funniest character animations we've ever seen. Combining classic arcade-style gameplay with huge bosses, Alien Hominid is an awesome experience that shouldn't be missed. For the first time, the result you with here at CyberNet, you too can... Under option S, R, T, E, D, G, and E. Be able to exit anything you want. So go nuts and there. Enjoy. Coming up, we have a ball with Budokai. Boogie down in the city and go for a backyard smackdown. We kick off the second half with a game based on the immensely popular cartoon television program Dragon Ball. Although the show has spawned a slew of titles, none have been particularly well received. It wasn't until the launch of the Budokai series that gamers took notice. And now the third and best installment arrives on the PS2. Notice this graphical quality it's based on by a glowing brighter as play. In World Tournament upgrades to prove your skill. Center piece of the year players have angly for this all those that have so unfortunate except the battles are fact there and the shit to go up against series are terrifying day life of there's only so much i'm let cyber for grand theft ps2 at any time during gameplay hit circle circle l1 circle 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 l1 l2 r1 triangle circle and triangle we've just unlocked a rhino tank for you now if getting behind the wheel of this bad boy doesn't make you king of your neighborhood then nothing will enjoy The developers of the ultra-popular series The Sims have unleashed a spin-off for all consoles where players can walk in the shoes of your everyday urbanite. It's a world where looking good is an imperative, style's a priority, and success is solely dependent on how well you socialize. Welcome to the world of the herbs. This title entraps players the same way all previous versions of The Sims do, by giving you just enough duties to ensure that you never want to put the game down. It's less demanding than the other Sims titles, leaving you with just five individual needs to be met. Fun, bladder, hunger, hygiene, and energy. It's kind of like real life. Let's get it started. Let's get it started. Let's get it started. Let's get it started. 
You arrive on the scene with little or no reputation. Then you design your character by first basing him or her on one of the nine neighborhoods which include artsy, decadent, punk, urban, and so on. The idea is to socialize with your new friends and land invites to all the big name parties, increasing your social standing with the ultimate goal of becoming the most popular urban town. Everybody here. Each district has the same exact goal, so it really doesn't matter in what order you approach the objectives. All the jobs in this title are mini games that you must complete in order to earn cash and social moves. It doesn't matter if you're a sushi chef, motorcycle mechanic, or an apprentice model. Each requires you to press a sequence of buttons as they arrive on the screen to succeed. On the other hand, romance all depends on a willing partner no matter what part of town you're in. Let's get it started in here. Let's get it started. In your race to become the hippest cat in town, don't forget to have some fun. Because when all is said and done, and you're given the keys to the penthouse, all that's left to ponder is where to put your couch. A hollow victory in a shallow life. Still, the journey is an absorbing adventure, making the herbs a must-have for all fans of The Sims, especially those with a fondness for the bright lights of the big city. Hang on tight, we just came back from the future to bring you this tremendous preview footage of the upcoming Time Splitters Future Perfect for all consoles. Electronic Arts, the franchise's new publisher, is looking to take this third entry in the series to the next level. In this first-person shooter, you'll once again control Cortez, the bald time-traveling marine who must stop the Time Splitters from stealing time crystals. You'll travel between the years 1914 to 2401 in this epic adventure. And this time, you'll have the ability to team up with past and future versions of yourself. You can even correct the mistakes you made in the past. Just be careful that you don't create a time paradox. And with more gadgets and weapons, such as the gravity gun, which can be used to levitate vehicles and people, it's sure to be exciting. There's also going to be a host of new vehicles you can drive. So multiplayer death matches will be a blast, especially in the levels you'll be able to create with the map maker feature. So stay tuned for our full review. Sure, wrestling against The Rock and Hulk Hogan in the WWE is a thrill, but sometimes bashing a buddy in your hometown can be equally rewarding. Last year, Backyard Wrestling took this rough and tumble sport out of the ring, and now it's back in There Goes the Neighborhood for the Xbox and PS2. What started off as a simple noise complaint has broken out into a full-scale brawl. For the most part, this sequel plays just like the original. You create a wrestler and try to become the neighborhood champ by defeating a string of opponents. As for the setting and premise, this sport was originally inspired by some fearless fans who found a way to capitalize on the over-the-top activity. Backyard Wrestling is, you know, based on the popular series of tapes and DVDs where kids would kind of record their own wrestling matches and send them in and they started marketing like the best of footage. And so, you know, a lot of our action takes place, you know, in backyards or unorthodox, you know, environments. We don't feature rings like the WWE product. We kind of like to incorporate things that are in the environment into our matches, whether it's tables and chairs or, you know, rusted old automobiles or jumping off the roof. I mean, it, basically there's just no rules in backyard wrestling. The landscapes include all the places you might find in an ordinary neighborhood like a pool or backyard. Most importantly, each environment presents unique opportunities for causing maximum damage to your opponents. Well, our game actually takes place in a fictitious town, so we've got levels in a couple of different backyards, we've got a level in a miniature golf course, a level in a fast food restaurant, an office building, a junkyard, a carnival, so we're trying to 
kind of run the gamut and, and do a lot of things differently and wrestle in some places where you know people haven't seen a, a wrestling or a fighting game take place before. Fortunately, this edition boasts several new modes, features, and gameplay elements that improve upon the original. First and foremost, the wrestling system includes many more grappling maneuvers. It still has a pick-up-and-play style, but now you can perform submission holds and reversals. Plus, there's an increased emphasis on defense, which help counteract the outrageous super finisher moves that cause major damage. The environments are very interactive, allowing players to use items and debris to throw at opponents. Nearly everything is destructible and useful as a weapon. What we like to do is feature, you know, things that you would find in these environments. So if you're in the junkyard, you know, there's tires you can use, there's bricks, there's fluorescent light tubes, um, barbed wire. Sometimes we'll take a baseball bat and you wrap it in barbed wire and use that as a prop. Um, so, I mean, it's pretty much up, up to your imagination. This title benefits by improved graphics, online modes, and the inclusion of more than 20 licensed wrestlers, including band members of the Insane Clown Posse. Sadly, it still falls short of similar titles like Def Jam Vendetta, primarily because the mechanics are clumsy and combat is still far too simplistic. Worst of all, the collision detection is very erratic. Fighters can fly through objects and get hit even when it looks like a clear miss. But even though it falls short, Backyard Wrestling 2 still has plenty of crazy moves for grappling fans who like to live on the wild side. It looks like we've come to the end of another bruising episode of Cybernet. We gotta run, but we'll be back soon with even more fantastic games and features from around the world. Don't forget to keep in touch via email. So until next time, here's more sci-fi action from Killzone, compliments of Cybernet.